Our next item on the agenda is working with blogs and Blackboard Learn with Rick Ramos. Hello everybody, I'm Rick Ramos and uh, today we're going to talk about the blogs in Blackboard. Um, I know some of you uh, might be using it or are interested in using it and, and don't know how to set it up. So today we're going to go over just that. Uh, so a blog, if you don't know, it's a shorthand term for a web blog. Uh, it's a personal online journal that is frequently updated and intended for general public access and use. Uh, in Blackboard, the blog encourages students to clearly express their ideas and addresses the need to expand various aspects of social learning. So it's an important tool that we have in Blackboard and I encourage everybody to start using it if you can. Uh, in Blackboard, we have two types of blogs, two types of uh, entries, the, the blog entries and the comments. The entries are uh, comments that the person who owns the blogs uh, makes and then the comments are comments that are made uh, for the entries. Uh, well, we're going to see some examples of that. Uh, the professor usually has full control over the blog and uh, can edit, delete entries and comments. Um, okay, so how do we create a blog topic? The first thing that you have to do is make sure that your edit mode is on. Uh, I know it's an important thing but some, sometimes we forget that the edit mode is not on and we might not be able to uh, uh, to start the, the creation of a blog or, or anything else for that matter in Blackboard. Then the next thing you would have to do is go to the course tools under the control panel and click blogs. Then you will have the, the create blog page and you just click on the button to create the new blog. Uh, in the create blog page, make sure that you put the blog name and if you, um, if you want you can put some uh, instructions for the, for the students in the instruction field. The next step is to make the blog available. So if you want them to start using it right away, here it is. Click yes to make it available. And if you want to restrict the access for a certain time, um, check the box display after and display until. Don't forget to put the date and the time for each one of those. Uh, the blog will be available only the, the time frame that you have selected. Now the next thing is the participation, blog participation. Uh, do you want this to be individual to all students or do you want or do you want this to be a blog for the whole course? The individual to all students will create one blog for each student. So each student will have their own blog. If you make the, uh, the blog for the course, uh, everybody will be participating uh, in one in the same core in the same blog for everybody. Now if you want people to post anonymously, you can allow that to happen. Uh, this is optional of course and you don't have to do it. In the blog settings, uh, you can select the index entries and you can either show them to appear monthly or weekly. Uh, depends on the, the activity. If you have more or less uh, an active blog, you can decide whether it's monthly or, or weekly. Uh, the next option is that you want to allow the users to edit, delete entries or just to allow users to delete comments. Uh, that's also an important one that you can, you might want to decide if you want to make it available or not. Then in the grade settings, um, now this is an important decision that you will be taking. Do you want this blog to be part of the grade center and uh, uh, to allow you to enter a grade. If you if you are going to do that, then go ahead and select the grade option and enter the points possible for that. Uh, now I want to be I want to caution you on this. If you create a blog and you make it gradable and click submit, once you do that, it is permanently gradable, like it's explained here, and you you cannot change the settings to no grading. You will have to delete the blog. 
So once you set up the grade to be gradable, you cannot change it back to non-gradable. Uh, then right below that, you'll have uh, the option to show participants in needs grading. So basically, once uh, a student puts, posts uh, an entry in the blog, uh, you can have the option to make it appear in your grade center uh, with this icon, which means needs grading. And, and here you have the option to decide how many entries do they, can they make before you'll get the needs grading icon in your grade center. Now the blogs have a due date available. It wasn't there before. Uh, I don't think in our version 12 we had that before. Uh, but in Service Pack 14 and the new uh, building block, the due date is available. So you can set up a due date for the block. Uh, the add rubric, you have the option to add a rubric, but that's probably going to be for another topic in the future. Uh, but you can, you definitely have the option to add a rubric for your grade center. Oh, I'm sorry, for, <laughs> for your blog. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next one. All right, so after that, you click Submit, and your blog will be ready. Now, the blog is created, but it's not yet available to the students. So, so how, do you make, how do you make a blog available to your students? Uh, the first thing is to decide where you want the blog to appear to them. In this case, I decided that this is going to be in the assignment area. So I'm going to click on the assignment area. I'm going to go to the tools in the assignment area, and I'm going to select blogs. Once I do that, I'm going to get the, to the blog page. And I have these two options here, links to the blogs page or to a blog. If I select this first option right here, link to the blogs page, this will create a link to all the blogs that I would have created in my class. But if I select this option, and this is the one we're going to go with, uh, we can create a link to one specific blog. So once I click on this radio button, the list of blogs here will become available. And then I will have to choose which blog do I want to create a link to. Uh, in this case, it's very easy. We only have one. So I will select that blog. Or if it's not showing up in here, I can go ahead and create a new blog from scratch, like we saw earlier. Uh, but this is what we're going to do. We're going to select this one. After that, uh, you'll have um, to set up the options for the blog. And this is the same thing that you have for everything you create in Blackboard. You have the options like the availability, uh, the track the number of views, and the date restrictions. So you'll have to set that up and then just click Submit. And now the blog is available to the students. Now. Once uh, the blog is available, this is pretty much kind of what you will see as the instructor. Um, if you click in your blog, you will see your blog is empty. There's nothing in there. You, you will have your instructions here and here. And if you want to start typing in your blog, all you have to do is create the blog entry, and you'll be able to put in your comments. If you want to follow what the students have created, uh, there is a drop down right here. I put it with this arrow right here. And the drop down will come up in red, as you can see. Now, you will have all the students that have posted in their blogs or that have created their entries in their blogs, and their individual blogs for each one. So, for example, this is the student account uh, in each course. It has, there is an entry. Uh, there's a student with, the, with an entry and another student with an entry. So, if you want, you just click on their, uh, on their name, and it will take you to their blog, and you'll be able to follow them. So the blogs are great for getting your students to be creative and really say what they think about the topic. Uh, they're usually more open-ended and longer and less than a discussion board. Uh, they allow your students more flexibility uh, in what they choose to talk about. Blogs, in general, are really good to allow students to express themselves. So I encourage you to um, use them as much as you can. And you'll be surprised on the feedback that you might get from your students. Um, if anybody has a question on people that joined us, please feel free to ask. 
I'm uh, willing to answer anything that you have. Questions?